bulk acquisitions like the Borghese and Albani connections did not cease under the Second Empire. Between 1852 and 1870, 20,000 new pieces were added to the Louvre Museum. The Sauvageau collection was donated in 1856. Alexandre Charles Sauvageau, 1781-1860, violinist, customs officer and avid collector, had amassed in his small apartment in the Rue Poissonnière a huge number of objects from the Middle Ages and the Renaissance. There were, for instance, 120 ivory carvings, 97 ceramics by Bernard Palissy, said to be worth 138,000 francs, a total of 1,680 pieces valued at 600,000 francs. Sauvageau was rewarded with an honorary curatorship of the Louvre Museum in 1856, and from 1858 an apartment in the Louvre. The Sauvageau collection was a donation. The acquisition of the Campana collection in 1861 was a purchase that had more to do with the emperor himself. Gian Pietro Campana, 1808-1880, came from a wealthy family. In 1833, he inherited from his grandfather and father the directorship of the Monte di Pietà Bank, an important financial institution belonging to the Vatican. He was a banker, an entrepreneur, a patron of the arts, a philanthropist, an archaeologist, and above all, a collector. His collections were displayed in the Villa Campana, and some in the Monte di Pietà itself. He was such an avid collector that his excavations and purchases outran his funds. He then provided himself with ample unofficial loans from the Monte di Pietà. His fraudulent dealings were punished in 1857 by a 20-year prison sentence commuted to perpetual banishment and confiscation of his collection, which the Vatican proceeded to sell. The South Kensington Museum, now the Victoria and Albert Museum, which had been founded in 1857 to encourage the industrial and decorative arts, spent £5,836 in 1861, on 85 examples of medieval and Renaissance sculpture and majolica. Tsar Alexander II obtained for the Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg 777 other pieces, notably marble statues and vases. The remainder, apart from the coins which remained in Rome, were acquired for the Louvre by Napoleon III, partly through his friendship with Campana's wife, Emily Rose Campana. 
Louis Napoleon had met her and her family in England during his early exile, and during his final exile he lived in her former home. Many Etruscan objects, from pots to tombs, ancient jewellery, Hellenistic Greek and Roman statuary, bronzes, Italian paintings, Italian majolica, in all 11,835 items, costing 4,364,000 francs, entered the possession of the French state. They did not at once enter the Louvre, as the Grande Galerie was not ready for them. They were put on display in the Palais de l'Industrie, built in 1855 for the Universal Exhibition on the site of the present Grand Palais and Petit Palais. The Napoleon III Museum, as it was then called, was inaugurated by the Emperor on the 30th of April, 1862. It had 22,000 visitors between the 1st and the 4th of April. The magazine L'Illustration, in a series of articles in 1862 and 1863, described and depicted the collection. Not all comments on the display in the Palais de l'Industrie were complimentary. The journal Amusant of the 5th of July, 1862, introducing three pages of cartoons, states that the collection contains 10,000 pots, 200 paintings, 700 pieces of majolica, 500 bronzes, almost 150 notices forbidding viewers to touch the objects on display, 200 busts, a heap of terracotta, and innumerable pieces of broken glass of the highest value. The great number of pots is mocked more than once. One pair of satirical cartoons tells us that, having made less jam than they expected, the Etruscans got rid of their pots by burying them underground, thus unwittingly laying the foundations of art history. It is interesting to see how differently some of the same objects are depicted in these two magazines. The collection could not remain permanently in the Palais de l'Industrie. It had been built without heating, in the expectation that it would be used only in the summer months. There was also some debate as to whether the collection belonged in an independent museum of industrial and decorative art, or whether the Louvre should be a museum of everything. The Louvre won, and the collection became the direct responsibility of the museum on the 1st of July, 1862. The Napoleon III Museum in the Palais de l'Industrie closed on the 31st of October, 1862. Part of the collection went to the Louvre Museum itself, and the various rooms in which it was displayed retained the name of Napoleon III Museum. Part of the collection was dispersed into departmental museums. 
the Museum of Decorative Arts, did not come into being until 1905. Turning right at the top of the Henri II staircase, one entered the former guardroom above the Cell des Cariatides. Louis XVIII had turned it into a setting for the royal sessions of deputies and peers. It had now become the terracotta room. The balconies remained, but the ceiling was now of glass. The windows had been replaced by bronze iron cabinets containing the smaller objects, while the larger ones were on platforms in the centre. Other items from the Campana collection were in the Renaissance Museum. Its vestibule was at the top of the north stairs of the colonnade, up from the Assyrian Museum. In 2018, a gilded bronze finger in the Louvre from the Campana collection was identified as belonging to the gigantic statue of the Emperor Constantine, the head and hand of which are exhibited in the Capitoline Museum in Rome. From the 7th of November 2018, to the 18th of February 2019, an exhibition entitled Un rêve d'Italie, A Dream of Italy, reunited in the Louvre 500 objects collected by Gian Pietro Campana and now owned by the Louvre in Paris and the Hermitage in Petersburg. The Campana collection in the Louvre is not now normally displayed as a single collection, but in a more soundly museological arrangement. The origin of the collection is, however, remembered in the Campana Gallery, a suite of rooms housing ceramics on the first floor of the south wing of the old Louvre, facing the Institut de France on the other side of the river. Louis Lacaz, 1798-1869, son of a wealthy banker, became a doctor and distinguished himself during the cholera epidemic of 1832. He was also an art collector and philanthropist, as well as an amateur artist. His painting of Psyche and Cupid is in the Musée des Beaux-Arts in Pau. He retired from medicine in 1852 and devoted himself almost entirely to his collection of paintings mainly of the 17th and 18th centuries, which were, at the time, not yet of great general interest or much in demand. His will, made in 1865, when he had 455 paintings, said, I leave to the Museum of Paris my whole collection of paintings, such as it is at my death. I hope that it will have a room devoted to it. If there are any that the museum does not want to accept, I ask it to distribute them to a number of provincial museums. I naturally accept family portraits and other paintings I have done. My heirs will do with them as they wish. At his death, in 1869, his paintings were received by the Louvre. 272 of his 583 paintings were retained there. From 1872 
After the Franco-Prussian War, the remainder were distributed to provincial museums, especially that of Pau, his family's place of origin. The Lacaz collection was displayed in the Louvre in the former Salle des Séances, the same room that had housed the terracotta of the Campana collection. The Emperor Napoleon III and the Empress Eugénie made a special visit to the Louvre to see the collection on March the 14th, 1870, accompanied by the Superintendent of Fine Arts, Comte de Neuverkerque, and the Minister of Fine Arts, Marshal Vaillant. This was the most important donation the Louvre received under the Second Empire, and introduced the public to the work of such painters as Watteau and Chardin. Among the works added to the museum were Rubens, the elevation of the cross, dating from between 1600 and 1625, Rubens' Philopoimen, general of the Achaeans, recognized by his hosts in Megara, 1609-10. Franz Hals, the Gypsy, 1626. Louis Le Nain, a peasant meal, 1642. Philippe de Champagne, the provost of the merchants and the alderman of Paris, 1648. Rembrandt, Bathsheba holding King David's letter, 1654. Watteau, Nymph and Satyr, otherwise known as Jupiter and Antiope, 1715. Watteau, Assembly in a Park, 1716-17. Watteau, The Indifferent Man, 1717. This painting was stolen from the Louvre on June the 11th, 1939, and returned by the thief on August the 14th the following year. Watteau, Pierrot, 1718-19 Chardin, The Copper Drinking Fountain, 1733-34 Chardin, Saying Grace, 1740 Chardin, Still Life with a Jar of Olives, 1760 Fragonard, Bathers, 1761-69, and Fragonard, a portrait formerly known as Study, identified in 2011 as Madame Brion de Jouy, about 1769. In 1921, the collection was still all in one room, of which Édouard Villard painted a small part. More or less identifiable is Chardin's still life with a jar of olives on the left at the top. Under it is Fragonard's Madame Brion de Jouy. On the right is Watteau's Nymph and Satyr. Above it appears to be a portrait by Jacinthe Rigaud. In 2007, from April the 26th to July the 9th, an exhibition in the Louvre reassembled the paintings to commemorate Lacaze's bequest. The exhibition was entitled 1869 Watteau and Chardin Enter the Museum, 
the Lacaz collection. It was also shown in Pau and in 2008 at the Wallace Collection in London, an entirely appropriate venue since the collector chiefly responsible for the Wallace Collection, Lord Hartford, was a contemporary of Lacaz. <laughs>